During the course of the skydiving season, your equipment is constantly undergoing a certain amount of wear and degradation on each jump. Because it's a gradual process, you don't often realize just how worn and degraded the equipment has become. At least once a year, or every 50 to 100 jumps, you should give your parachute equipment a thorough inspection as a preventative measure to equipment failure and malfunction. This is a more thorough procedure than the more general inspection which should be a part of every pack job. Either you or your rigger should inspect your parachute system in a clean, well-lit area that will allow you to spread the main canopy completely out. Consult the owner's manual for your harness container to inspect those portions of your parachute system. To inspect the top surface of the canopy, lay the parachute out completely on its bottom side with the top of the canopy facing the ceiling. Starting at the stabilizer, slowly inspect the top surface of the canopy, looking for rips, tears, holes, discolorations, stains, loose or broken stitching, or any other damage or degradation. Again, be sure and move across the top surface slowly and carefully. Periodically check the fabric strength by gripping fabric in both hands and attempt to tear it with a moderate tug. This is especially important in areas which are discolored, faded, or suspected of being weak. After you have checked the stabilizer, visually inspect from nose to tail or tail to nose across a complete top skin. Then move to the next skin and repeat in reverse order. Check the bridle attachment for damage to the webbing and ring, as well as stitches pulling loose from the canopy. If your work area does not allow your canopy to be fully laid out flat, as we've shown, you can also use the side stack method of canopy inspection. Many packing hangers or lofts have a hanging rack as well, which is also a very good method for canopy inspection. The bottom surface inspection is nearly identical to the top surface. You are still looking for rips, tears, holes, discolorations and stains, loose stitching, broken stitching, and any other damage or degradation. With the bottom surface inspection, you want to look carefully at each of the line attachment locations. Check the fabric under the attachment points for tears or stress. Check the line attachment tape for loose stitching or damage. Periodically check the fabric strength by gripping fabric in both hands and attempt to tear it with a moderate tug. If your inspection area is not large enough to completely spread the canopy out, you can easily do the same inspection with the canopy laid stacked on its side. Whether inspecting the bottom skin with the canopy fully laid out, or when using the side stack method, it is again very important to be methodical and thorough. It is better to inspect the same area twice from overlapping than it is to miss an area that might have a problem. You want to look inside each half cell and inspect the ribs. Check for loose and broken stitching along the seams and any other damage or degradation. Also look for frayed edges on the inside of the cross port holes. This fraying is typically not a problem and does not need repair. If you are not sure, consult an experienced and knowledgeable rigger. The slider experiences a fair amount of wear and tear through normal usage. Inspect the perimeter of the slider and slider tape for damage as well as loose and broken stitching. Check the collapsible drawstring channels for frayed edges or broken stitching. Check the drawstrings themselves for functionality. Most of the damage on a slider can be easily repaired by your local rigging loft. The earlier the damage is detected and repaired, the easier the repair will be. Check the inside of each grommet carefully for rough edges and damage. This damage will cause severe wear on your lines. Make sure the grommets are still well seated together and the curled lip is not separating. Once the canopy and slider inspection is complete, it is time to check your lines. Starting at the connector links, separate each line group in your fingers and check each individual line as you walk slowly towards your canopy. Look for excessive abrasion and damage. 
Pay special attention to each end as well as the cascade area where lines are finger trapped and sewn with a bar tack stitch. Check your steering lines for twists. This should be done at each pack job and the twists removed. Repeated jumping with twisted steering lines will cause them to shorten and weaken. If you fly your canopy with the slider pulled down the risers, pay extra attention to the brake loop area of your steering lines. This is a high wear area from the slider grommet rubbing on the line. Also check your riser edges and guide ring area thoroughly. Rough edges in these areas can cause premature damage to your steering lines. If your risers don't have any type of retention system for your excess steering line, check with your rigger to rectify this. Not properly stowing your excess steering line can cause a serious malfunction which can lead to injury or death. When using slinks, Check them for excess wear and damage. Be sure the tab stays securely in place between the folds of the riser's webbing. If the slink tab does not easily stay inside the riser, it may be tacked down to keep in place. Leave slack in the tab and run the tacking cord through the slink label and one side of the riser, and then back through to center. Tie the loose end securely with a surgeon's knot. If you are using steel repeat links, be sure the barrel is tight and the connector link covers are securely hand tacked to stay in place. It is important to protect the slider grommet from hitting the connector link to prevent damage to the grommet. Performance Designs has created this video as an educational guideline. As always, we encourage you to seek out additional information. The more you know, the safer you are.